Good morning everyone. Welcome to the lesson number four. In this lesson, we are going to learn several Excel functions such as MPV, PV, IR, PMT, and MPER. You see, all of these functions are more related to finance and how to find out some specific issues regarding finance and value of stocks, the present value, the prices, the internal rate of return, the payment amount and the number of periods. Here I will give you an example to illustrate all of this uh, case. We have here we're assuming an initial investment of $150,000 and we're assuming here that we will receive 15,000 for 12 months. We could say here between parentheses, months. And we have here the year. Now, for simplification, we just select both of these after anything 0 and 1, so Excel would understand that we are doing sequence by dragging it. Notice that in finance, there's a there's a jargon in finance where year zero means now, which is the present. Let's assume that we paid one fifty thousand dollars as in to uh, to buy a car that will get us fifteen thousand dollars per month. This is uh, this is what we call in finance discounted cash flow method. Starting from here, we can select this cell and copy to make sure that we get the same cash flows throughout the year. Now the question is how do we calculate the net present value or the present value, the IRR, PMT and PER, what's the difference between net present value and present value? Let's start with the net present value. The net present value in finance is simply the net present value, the present value of all of these cash flows minus the initial investment, while present value is only the present value of the whole cash flows. Now, in order for us to proceed, we see from here that we do not have the we will assume here a discount rate of 6%. Now based on that, we will start with the MPV. Notice in Excel, MPV in Excel is not, does not actually match the true principle or the true concept. While in MPV function of Excel, it will calculate the present values, but it won't consider the initial investment. Therefore, here we should only select the rate and the cash inflows and here we should complement this formula by adding or deducting the initial investment to get the true net present value. We could see here that it is minus where we have got a loss. Now, if we count, now, how do we do it using the present value function? The only difference between MPV and PV is that the net present value, it will give us the, net pres the present value of all of these cash flows, but without considering the initial investment. We should start here by selecting the rate. Number of period is 12, since we can count like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. until we get to 12. The payment, we have a payment which is positive payment of 15,000. Now we can ignore, we can ignore the FV and type since it's not what we are discussing. Now you see here, you notice that it is minus 1250 if we add to it this cash flow we should end up with almost with the same result however 
here we could see that there is there are some differences due due to the rate, the number of periods, and the payment. We could make actually the payment is supposed to be different, but here we are just making an assumption. Over here we could see that we added the initial investment. If we remove it, we end up with 125,000, which is the same as the present value. But since the net present value, the true concept, it should include the initial investment, we know that we, are, we have lost 24,000, nearly 24,000 pounds in this project. Over here, we could um, minus the initial investment and we get the same result. Actually, here we should notice that this, we are still in loss anyway, since the present value is not supposed to be minus, and as over here. So, to proceed, now, let's say that we need to get the internal rate of return. The internal rate of return is the rate at which we will we are gaining money on this project. It's how our one fifty thousand is paying us back what we are working for. IRR you could enter it simply by entering IRR and then the nice thing about IRR is that we should we can select all the cash flow whether they are negative or not. And we end up with 3%. Looking at the number, since 3% is less than 6%, which is the discount rate we have been given, we will reject this project. If IRR is higher than the discount rate, we would have accepted it because it would have meant that we won't get negative net present value we would have got a positive net present value. Now, let's assume that we don't know the payments. We don't know that it is 15,000. How do we calculate the payment over here? There's a simple way in which we can calculate the payment. First of all, let's say PMT, the rate, which is the 6%, with 12 periods along with the present value of course here the present value should should bring it back to how it was before by simply saying one minus 150,000 to get the present value we ended up with uh, actually this is a wrong number but anyway, this, because this is just an example, I'm just illustrating the payment, the PMT function. Now we could move on to the number of periods. This number of periods formula, it could help us in determining how many periods do we need to pay off all of this amount. We could see it here that since we don't would not calculate the present value is needed in both of these. Anyway, uh, now we can talk about in general this is the net present value, present value IRR, pay empty, which is an abbreviation for payment, and number of periods, which means how many periods are we getting payments or are we receiving money in this case. We see here that the sum of all of the cash inflows is 180,000. Therefore, we are supposed to have profit, but unfortunately, it's not. Since we can, we should realize what's the time value of this money. This is quite important, especially when we want to know if we should consider a project or not consider it, even on the personal level we could apply that. And remember that if IRR is 
lower than this count rate, we should reject the project. One more thing that a more that MPV is normally more reliable than IRR in deciding whether we should take a project or not. Of course, assuming that we have more than another project, let's say that this project A and this project B. Of course, with project B, we should enter some. We could enter some values. Repeat the same stuff for MPV, PV, and IRR, and then we could decide which project is better. As well, overall. I think this has been a good presentation of the discounted cash flow method and how can we get to decide whether to take an investment or not using that method. I hope you have had that fun and have a good day.